I had an uh, a unbelievable um, roll of the dice, if, it, if you will. I mean, they're great athletes all over the NFL. And, I mean, I just was able to um, be in the right place at the right time every single time I needed to be in my career. I mean, I really can't complain about anything. I mean, I played for three future Hall of Famers. I played for Coach Cower, Bill Belichick, and uh, Coach Holmgren. And not in that order. I mean, it's really, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, not it, bad. it's arguable all the way around. But I was able to uh, learn a lot from all of these uh, wonderful coaching minds. And, uh, you know, it it is seriously um, screwed me up for the rest of my life because I got a little bit of all of those guys in me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not a bad thing to say. We're continuing that great Buckeye to the Steeler pipeline with a Cam Hayward, Troy Smith just signed recently. Absolutely. Is, is there an NFL team you root for? Your Browns fan now because you grew up in Cleveland, or you just you just follow the sport and you love know, the game? I mean, it, it's hard not to uh, root for the team you won a Super Bowl with. Okay, so New England. So New England, yes, of course. Um, I, I, my heart definitely is in Pittsburgh though because yeah. I was drafted there, and I have um, I'm best friends with Brett Kiesel, and uh, we stay in contact all the time. And uh, you know, I just have a bunch of friends still around that organization and the Rooney family, just like. Um, the Kraft family, um, that's where it starts. It starts mm -hmm. at the top. I mean, and you have that kind of um, pedigree at the top, then you're going to have success. Talk about Bill Belichick for a second. You mentioned Holmgren and Cowher, and certainly two of the game's best minds of all time. But Bill Belichick's the guy getting the spotlight this week as he's in yet another Super Bowl. Uh, you know, take us inside. He's a little bit of a private, secretive guy, and I, I certainly don't blame him for that. But you take us on the inside. What makes him such a great coach? He's black and white as much as he is gray with the media, he's very black and white. Mm -hmm. You know, it's either do it this way or you're gone. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> it's pretty, I mean, pretty easy. I mean, you know, it is a bunch of prideful, intelligent football players he puts together who he re understands that some days you don't feel like doing it, but you have to. And if you understand what he's asking for, then you're going to be successful. It's not easy to do that. I mean, you know, it's hard. You don't know where you stand. And I think that that makes you better every single time you go into the weight room, every single time you run a sprint, every single time you uh, win a game. I mean, there was times we were winning games, you know, we're on that long winning streak, and you look around the locker room and nobody knew that we won a game. <laughs> and, I mean, that that kind of pressure is how you win. I mean, it's not – you you know I've I've played I mean I played in some fun locker rooms at different times when I played with Seattle, I, you know we just did whatever we wanted and we just kept winning. I mean mm -hmm. and it was just we were kind of like you know, uh, just you know throwing together we were kind of makeshift sure. defense and you know just having fun, and things were falling in place. But no everything in New England, Bill Belichick has his stamp on. You know they've been making a big deal on ESPN in the last couple of days about you know. Uh, what was the term that they were using about uh, uh, humiliating people? Yeah. That's not what's happening. It's not happening that way. It is hard coaching. You have got to make a guy understand it. And he's going to talk to Tom Brady just like he would talk to Rodney Bailey. It doesn't matter. He, he doesn't matter. And, and, like, that makes everybody look around and say, hey, you know, I'm not going to look like he's going to talk like that to me and he's not going to talk like that to someone else. He talks like that to everybody because – Everybody's held accountable. It's a fascinating perspective. Rodney Bailey, a part of that 2004 Patriots Super Bowl championship team, our guest here on 97 won the fan. All right, let's talk about this uh, Patriots team getting get a little bit on the Giants. You got Brady, you got Wes Welker. We'll see about Gronkowski, a uh, Vince Wilfork Knights defensive lineman. It's a pretty good Patriots team. Are you surprised that very few people are picking them to win on Sunday with maybe the best quarterback of all time, one of the best coaches, and had a pretty good surrounding cast. A little bit of me believes that a lot of people are hoping that they don't win. Because well, no, of, that's true. Know, it's true. I mean, a lot of people are, you know, they're looking at it like, you know, they can't see Bill Belichick having a fourth. They can't see Tom having a fourth. What it is is here's the You have two great teams in this Super Bowl. It's hard right now for me to feel like – it doesn't even feel like it's Super Bowl week, really – because of the lockout. I mm -hmm. think that, that took a little bit away from it for sure. me. But you have these two teams. I'm not even thinking about 2007. It really has nothing to do with it because the personnel is a little bit different. But the one thing I understand is the Patriots play one game. They that Every single game the Patriots won, even when I was there, they play one game. They play to win this game this week. Brilliance that I think is by Belichick, 
he had the team come off the field after a full padded practice, I think the other day, um, and have a 31 minute halftime break to yeah, get them I saw used that. to the halftime. That halftime in the Super Bowl, I was in two Super Bowls. That is a long halftime. It feels like an hour. So you do have to do little situational things to get ready. And I don't see how you can say that the Giants, and Chris Mortensen said it, Chris Mortensen said that the Giants are the team to beat. I would beg to differ that because of the way that the Patriots have done it in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Forget about the regular season. Forget about the 13-3. and three. The way it's been done in the playoffs, I would have to say that the Patriots would be the, would be the, uh, the uh, favorites here. But, you know, who am I? Well, no, and let, let's talk about the Giants, though, because you would say that it's a pretty good New York Giants good, team. I mean, they've been impressed. A couple of former Buckeyes. we got Jake Bowder. we got Jimmy Cordo, who's going to be on the program tomorrow. But I don't know. Eli Manning is... Eli Manning's it's, awesome. It's a, it's amazing to me because when he came in a couple months ago, people were saying, fire him, fire Coughlin, get rid of now. I, it's yeah, New York. It's, it's not Columbus. It's New not, York. you know, middle America. It's New York. They want to fire everybody. Right. But it's an impressive run the Giants have been on. Well, the thing is that they keep the same types of parts. I mean, they come um, – Coughlin and Belichick come from the same tree. Yeah. They come from the, the great Bill Parcells tree. And the one thing about this uh, – game in, in the Giants, the Giants, they have a great offensive line. They hold all the time, ladies and gentlemen. They hold. That's the most holding offensive line I've ever played against. <laughs> so look for that on Sunday. So that's why Eli is always sitting back there with an hour to throw. Now, that's going to be the difference for the Patriots to see if they can get to him because they have some average pass rushers because of injury, because of they don't have the pass rushers. They're going to get some in, in the draft probably. On the other side, and I love up front, the Giants are coming after Tom Brady, and they're probably going to get to him. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're probably going to get to him. So this is going to be a great Super Bowl. I'm not – of course, I, you know, I'm going with the Patriots, and that is a, a bit biased, but I'm I'm doing it off the fact that I trust the way Bill Belichick coaches. And you've given him a fifth time to get to a Super Bowl, and he lost his last one. I don't see him leaving there. And, I mean, it has nothing to do with against the Giants. Sure. I just don't see him leaving there without winning this one. But the great thing, and what I hear, it's going to be a competitive game. Very for, much for so. For fans, that's what's great, because some years you go into Super Bowls, and there's no way of predicting it. But some years you just get a feeling this one's going to be lopsided. Some team backdoored their way in. This one's going to be a good there's game. storyline after storyline with this one. you got Eli playing in his brother's home. Mm-hmm. His brother may be gone. We don't know. Then you got Bill Belichick. You know, we talk about fourth, fourth and uh, fourth and one mm-hmm. over there in uh, Lucas Oil. You know, Tom Brady um, dressing in Peyton Manning's locker. I mean, yes. there's all kinds of little storylines that go along with this Super Bowl that make it fun. And the fact that they did play each other four years ago makes it even more fun. You got to play, or you got to be there for two of them playing them. Um, you know, Saturday night. Do you get any sleep? Uh, uh-uh. uh no sleep. <laughs> no, I mean it was it was. <laughs> I mean, I was injured for the first one, but the, yeah. The even that one, it was just like in the the weirdest thing in the world. You you stop and you think, wait a minute, there is nothing anybody else in the world is doing but watching this. Literally the world. It's not just America. Oh, it's Germany, goodness. Italy, Australia. They're all watching. You know, this is the Academy Awards. Yeah, this is it. This is the biggest stage in the world in this business that you can be on. And if you are one of the two teams, if you are a trainer. If you are a player, if you're a guy on IR, if you are Tom Brady, if you're a starter, you are at the peak of your football life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to have had that feeling two times, the first time was was so weird because it's like every moment you wake up and hope you're looking at your clock, you're saying, oh, okay, it's only four in the morning, you know. <laughs> Seven o'clock for breakfast. Okay, so yeah. you, you're waking up. You're watching the Super Bowl stuff on TV. Every guy acts like they're not watching it in the room. Everyone's watching all the old Super Bowl stuff. Everyone's excited. Have to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have to be. <laughs> so you know, it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for fans, and um, you know, you know, it, the worst feeling in the world, though. The worst feeling in the world is losing the Super Bowl. I, I have no doubt. All right. <laughs> let me get out uh, just real quick. Personally, you've you got a lot going on. We see on Wall to Wall Sports on 10 TV. We're going to have you on the radio more hopefully going forward. What do you got going on, though? A lot oh, of good oh, stuff. I, I have a lot of fun. I mean, everything I try to do is, is uh, fun-related. Around here, I try to support uh, all my Buckeye brothers with the things that they're doing. James Cotton, he has uh, the Buckeye Con Foundation, mm-hmm. and uh, we help raise money for underprivileged youth around Ohio and, and do camps. I work with uh, Luke and Mike Mike Vrabel and uh, 
Ryan Miller's charity, uh, Second and Seven Foundation. Uh, anytime they can, uh, I can help out with them, I do that. Like you said, I, um, I do O&N. Um, I'm in the process of uh, um, beginning my uh, entertainment company because I love the nightlife and I like the boogie. <laughs> <laughs> Just like uh, a lot of people, that's a, a passion that I've uh, figured that that's what it is. Plus, uh, you know, just um, all around just having a good time and uh, just trying to stay busy. Fans can find you on Facebook? They can find me on Facebook, Rodney Bailey, and then you can find me on Twitter at Hacksaw94. Hacksaw94. Brother, it's great catching up with you. I really appreciate the time. This is a fabulous perspective. We're going to have to do it again soon. Enjoy Absolutely. The su- enjoy the Super Bowl Sunday. Absolutely. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Thank you.